Let me bang you. I do let you bang. Hey, let me bang you. Let me bang you. Let you bang. Let me bang you. Let me bang you. Let me bang you. Greetings, Marys and Virgins. Go for Jesus. No for gay Jesus, people. Hey, I'm not surprised, motherfuckers. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time once again for your favorite mixed martial arts podcast. Recording out of Los Angeles, California, it's MMA Roasted with Adam Hunter. Who the fuck is that guy? What's up, people? Welcome to a brand new MMA Roasted podcast. It's me. I got. Greg Wilson, I got the legend Don Fry. Probably the best internet we've ever had is when you're in your car. So, uh, <laughs> I was just thinking the same thing too. I'm like, look how stable his internet is when he's not in his house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The question is like, where is he going, Greg? Uh, you got to speak up. Yeah, yeah. So you got to uh, speak up. I got. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so uh, Don Fry Jr., Greg Fry, uh, where are you heading to right now? Oh, we're in the car. We're on our way to uh, watch a bull get castrated. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, you know, it keeps you mentally <laughs> sharp. <laughs> Sounds like a great Tuesday, man. Um, oh, yeah. uh, I just found out an hour ago that Norm MacDonald passed away. Uh, which Yeah, I saw that, man. That's a bummer. What the hell happened? Uh, cancer. He's, like I said, he's had cancer for nine years. Um, Norm McDonald, one of my Holy favorites. crap, nine years. Wow, that's that's tough business right there. I had a buddy pass away on the 11th from cancer. Sean Madeira, oh. buddy who had that TLC 2000, the glucose chondroitin formula. And, uh, yeah, he passed away on the 11th. Sorry to hear that. Uh, Norm was one of my favorite comedians. Maybe, yeah, the, the most- too. Maybe the most naturally funny comedian ever. I would, I would totally agree with that. I, I was never like such a huge fan of his material, but when you'd be in a room with him, just sitting, just he, everything, anything, the coffee maker, he could make anything funny. He was so fucking funny in the room. Were you ever in a, a room with him? Yeah. yeah. When I worked at Comics Unleashed, we yeah. would, uh, you know, it was my job to prep all the comics. So I spent a lot of time with with John Panette, a legend that we lost too soon, and and, uh, and so many guys I got a chance to hang out with and spend time with. And one of them uh, was was Norm Macdonald. And I mean, he he would kill me. He was so funny naturally. Just his whole he had a fantastic cadence, yeah. you know, an incredible wit. And it just I just remember him the way he would just <laughs> attack the OJ thing, <laughs> which is what got him fired yeah. from yeah. SNL. And Norm's well, the, widow wants some wants some wants his watch back from you, you thief. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. I remember him actually talking about Comics Unleashed on Howard Stern. He said, uh, man, that was on Comics Unleashed. That show that show couldn't have been any more leashed. Any more leashed. That's right. That's right. Listen, I didn't say I was proud. Actually, I am proud to have worked on it. It was a great job. I loved working with all those other comics. I got a lot of people booked on the show. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people got their first uh, stand-up credit you know, TV credit because I got them on that show. So I really enjoyed the job. But yes, it was, you know, I mean, that's a Byron Allen production. It's going to be pretty canned. And that's just the way he does business. You know what I mean? That's his style. He said he was sitting next to John Lovitz. And he goes, uh, so Byron Allen goes, so John, I hear you're getting older. Like, that was it. Like, <laughs> like, 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 you get, that was, it was notorious for having the worst transitions. <laughs> Of any show, because there were no, nothing related to any at all. Someone would do a thing about their girlfriend, and then, yes, and he would turn to the other thing. He's like, so, I heard you lost your wallet. Like, and then, <laughs> and then, like it was the most direct softball pitch. Even radio guys, they kind of work it into conversation and kind yeah. of, like, lead up to your thing. There was none of that. It was just straight softball pitch, one to the next. He couldn't give a shit about continuity. He was like, this is a stand-up show. I'm setting these guys up for stand-up. So now we're looking Which we at the did, bottom, ironically, at the sitting bottom down. of Don's mustache, by the way. I've never seen this angle. Oh, wow. That's what Your that is. That's, that's a lot of chin. Good look. Good look. He said my wife has. What an asshole. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he still got it, baby. 
but yeah, that meant, I remember when I was on Comics Unleashed, the all the crew would laugh at how bad the transitions were, because like, like he would see, he he one time he goes he looks at somebody he goes so you think you can learn uh, uh, language by graffiti or like it was something that was like no one had ever made that sentence before like it was just like the middle yeah of- it, exactly like it wouldn't make sense unless you're setting somebody up for a bit about oh, so. graffiti being its own language. It was, he would, but that was just, that was Byron. He was producing a product. And listen, that product oh, sold yeah. incredibly well. That show is still running in syndication. So, I don't want to talk about Byron. I mean, about for all the shit that Byron Allen gets, you gotta give him credit for being able to produce, Norm you know. Forget Byron. Uh, yeah, whatever. Yes, yes. Norm was, Norm was incredibly funny and incredibly gracious and incredibly nice and treated me like a colleague, even though I was a total nobody to him. He yeah. do, was so respectful and nice. Was, I, I couldn't speak more highly about him. He was a great guy, and his passing is a real loss for the comedy community. I actually heard a story about Norm one time, and I, when I met him, I asked him if it was true, and he said it was totally true. So he was doing Star Surge, and he didn't want to do Star Surge because he only had like six clean minutes, right? And, right. and like he made it to like the finals basically, but he, yeah. did all, but he did all his clean jokes like in the semifinals or, so he's sitting there and he has no more material. So he, goes, <laughs> so, so he goes out in the finals and he goes, so uh, I got this bowl of soup and uh, in the soup, I put some crackers and then I put some, uh, I put some carrots and then I had a little bit of celery and uh, then I put some potatoes and then I put some, uh, some grapes. And this went on for five minutes. <laughs> there was no punchline. <laughs> and then he goes, he goes, uh, he, he got zero stars. Like, like the first guy to ever get zero stars in the finals. And then he's like so nervous. So then Emmett Mann goes up to him and goes, so Norm, you're from Canada, you know. Uh, so what's the difference between Canada and the U.S.? And then uh, Norm is so nervous, he looks down and he sees the guy's shoes. And he goes, shoes. And they go, all right, uh, give it for Norm. <laughs> Like that. And I asked Norm, I go, did that really happen? He said, yes, that's exactly, he said, that's absolutely what happened. Uh, but Corkle, you- Not much of an improviser on stage, but off stage, super funny. Uh, but Corkle, you saw Sean in concert, at uh, Norman concert, right? Recently? Yeah, uh, man, I'm actually heartbroken, man. He was my all time favorite comedian. Uh, I was sad just now to hear that he stole some of Brendan Schaub's comedy for that last Star Search show about the grapes <laughs> and the soup. Uh, which really sucked. Early but, on, too, early going. I, uh, I really was thinking about today, man, it's been a rough couple of years for stand-up comedy. Like you've got, like, I mean, the COVID thing has about killed it. you got Norm MacDonald dying today. Another famous comedian died. I can't remember who it was. But, uh, you know, not only did we lose Brendan or Norm MacDonald, we gained Brendan Shaw. So, of course, of course. Uh, That's true. Adam Hunter dies every night on stage. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Appreciate it. I I feel like it's just a mustache talking at this point. It really is. The mustache is also driving. So, um, Sean, how was his last show that you saw? Because you saw him a couple years ago, right? Yeah, that was awesome. Unfortunately, when you, like, I watch everything he does on YouTube and I've seen everything. So I knew most of the jokes other than the crowd work, but there wasn't a lot of that. Uh, it was at a casino. Uh, I don't remember where. I want to think, like, Mississippi or something. But I hung out at the casino all night hoping to catch him in there, like, doing his gambling thing. Yeah. But uh, there, there wasn't any professional sports season going on at the time. Uh, I did want to say... Before I forget, you know, Greg said that even though uh, he was a nobody to Norm McDonald, he's still training the same. I want Greg to know he'll always be a nobody to me. So, uh, <laughs> oh, thank you. I, thank you. Yeah, so I, 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 I wear that as a badge of honor. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get a T-shirt that says that. I'm nobody. <laughs> to, to God, who's, who's Greg? <laughs> Speaking of which, by the way, before I forget, have you seen the movie <laughs> Nobody on uh, Netflix, I think it is? No, I've heard it's pretty good, though, is it? It is Yeah, that's amazing. a good movie. That's a oh, good movie. Holy shit. Bob Odenkirk as an action star, because you're like, that's not what you think of Bob Odenkirk. No. As a guy that goes around fucking everybody up. Amazing. Like, yeah. he might be the best actor of all time. <laughs> because That was great. Was that oh, great? my God. Like, he just, it's it's not the kind of movie, like, my wife watched it, and within 10 minutes, she's like, what are we, what, what is it, what is it? Everyone's just killing people. <laughs> what is the point of this movie? <laughs> I want Don to explain how he watched anything on Netflix with that internet connection. That's what I want to know. Oh my God! It, but I mean, right, Don? Was that one of the best movies you've seen in a while, or what? Yeah, that was a great movie, man. I tell you, I was surprised when I, I thought the same thing. This guy's an action star. Come on, and he pulled it off, man. Pulled it off. 
Yeah. I actually yeah. met him in Vegas uh, not too long ago. And uh, I was like, hey, man, I'm a big fan. I remember, you know, from back in the day from Mr. Show and all that. And he's like, oh, wow, that's great. I'm like, yeah, I'm a comedian too, blah, blah, blah. He goes, oh, do you know so-and-so? And I'm like, yeah, no. <laughs> and he named like three, like three, he named like three, like big industry people. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm like, uh, no, I don't, uh, no. I, I'm more of a club level comedian. I'm a... <laughs> Well, By the way, Don, are you out there patrolling the border right now? Is that what you're doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. How'd you know, man? Yeah. I'm looking out your window. I can see. <laughs> you know the bumps beautiful day keep out going there. Over. The bumps that keep going over are illegals. So <laughs> oh, 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 down the herd. Oh, oh. Uh, oh man. Uh, can you imagine? Um, imagine you imagine you cross the border and the first person you see is Don Fry. Like, I mean, I would just just turn around and run. <laughs> I'd turn around and be like, I'll take my chances with the cartel. <laughs> yeah. um, by the way, uh, speaking of rough, so Mayhem Miller, uh, we got to address it because he has been a part of the show. So he's back in jail. Um, he got arrested. Yeah. I, I don't know what to say. Uh, there Certain things are just like inexcusable. Uh, and what he's being accused of is inexcusable. And uh you obviously don't support it and it's a friend of mine that like he was going out with the whole thing is just, is completely fucked um i don't know i hope he gets the help he needs and he needs a lot of help um because the dude's had so many opportunities and so many people have like you know bent over backwards and trying to really help this guy and you know alcohol and drugs are definitely a part of it but i can't blame all of it because he's the one doing the alcohol and doing the drugs so i don't want to be like well it's, you know he's not a victim here uh the victim is uh, the person who he's allegedly you know domestic violence and it's just I, nothing now nothing good to say about this other than like i hope he gets the help because he, he he like needs it and i'm really disappointed in, uh, in uh but not not good not good no bueno no it's not a good look and it sucks you know he's he's one of those guys you know i had a um i, I want to like a second cousin that was like this and these guys they're just wild horses you know and, and they can't be tamed they're not it's like they're born in the wrong century or something they should be wild men out you know just out there hunting and killing shit but they're they're they you know they keep trying to domesticate them and you can't do it um you know i mean i know he i know he hated jail but he didn't do anything to not go back to jail it's like bro you're out you were out you were free you were safe you had people helping you you had everybody that was rooting for you it's like bro what the fuck man um, I, I don't get it. Yeah, it sucks, I honestly, man. It, I honestly don't it get sucks. it. I don't, I, don't, I don't know what he was thinking. Um, so, uh, on a different level, I don't know what uh, Holyfield was thinking either. So, let's talk about some of the fights that went on over the weekend. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I watch any of this crap. I, I mean, there was no UFC over the weekend and no, and no Bellator. There was nothing else. You would think that the PFL yeah. Bellator would just find the weeks that there's no UFC and have an event. Uh, that would be like the, the thing to do, right? I mean, they have to know somebody. Can't maybe get that would that would make sense. Yes. <laughs> like, do you think they were trying to stay away from from football? But it's just college football on Saturday. I mean, they they still own Saturdays. I don't know what what they were thinking, but I know that I ended up watching this. First of all, Evander Holyfield took the fight on one week notice. The, the, I mean, he should <laughs> the fight should. Have, someone's like, when's the fight? I'm like, it should have been in 1996. Uh, but this fight, like Holyfield looked like, who's his trainer? Who are his friends? Is anybody here telling this guy like, listen, man, this is not a good idea. I'm holding the mitts for you. I'm watching you. I'm sparring with you. Let's not do this. Uh, it's not worth the brain damage that you're going to get done. Did you know, I wish somebody would have said that to me on my last fight. Cause that's pretty much how it was. You know, I'm like, do you think, do you think I should do this? Oh, yeah, yeah, you're great. You know, you're doing good. I'm thinking, fuck, I can't even twist my torso. But I took the fight. It wasn't good. <laughs> yeah, but at least, Donald, I mean, you weren't 58 years old, though. I mean, at least you were, what, in your 40s, early 40s? No, I don't know. I don't, yeah, 45. Yeah. And 10 at least years was, ago. Yeah, I mean, that was still 40. I mean, Sean, you were the yeah, only one. It was, who wanted to do it was five months. It was five months after my fifth back surgery, so. Oy, oy, oy. So, I mean, what is your trainer telling you? Your trainer says you're in, you're in great shape, you're gonna win this? 
Yeah. Yeah. So, what about you, Sean? I, uh, no, I was telling myself I shouldn't be doing it, but I'd already signed the contract and agreed to it. My last couple, I was like, I really shouldn't be doing this. Like, uh, I was having trouble walking. I mean, you remember at that point, I was even having trouble walking, man. So yeah. it, um, it wasn't even money at that point. It's just, I don't know. Part of you doesn't want to believe it's over too. You know, like part of you doesn't want to think like, uh, but I would say Holyfield's advisors are probably the same people that helped him go through his $300 million he made while he was fighting to where he's bankrupt now. He's probably got this, the same team like, oh, you can get out there one more time. You know, like go, go out there and make us some more money. But uh, I, I don't know, man. Between him and Tyson, like I know, I guess I know how you go that broke. I just don't know how any, no one cares about you around you to keep you from going that broke, you know? so. I remember reading an article. Was the fight him. one round? Was that one round? Yeah, it was one round. One minute. Like, yeah. I mean, he basically he like, he missed and went through the ropes basically on his own without even getting touched. Because <laughs> I just I got I just looked up. Of, I just wanted to see the the you know what he looked like. And I, there's a video. It says Evander Holyfield versus Vitor Belfort highlights. It's a minute long. Yeah, that yeah. Was, it was a minute. It was a minute too long. I mean, the the thing was is that. It was insane. It was insane. I read an article that like Holyfield said, wrote, he said in uh, an interview, he goes, yeah, no one teaches you in school how not to go lose, how not to go through $200 million. I'm like, probably because you don't need to go to school. <laughs> yeah, because it's real easy. Don't spend $200 million. You spend $50 million, don't spend the whole 200 It's crazy. Yeah, but you got, you got people, you know, with you going, Oh, I need this. I need that. You know, you're my best friend. I love you. You know, and then of course you got the women doing that crap. And then, you know, you got an advisor or an accountant who's saying, no, 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 don't. But, you know, they could be putting some in their own pocket. Yeah. I mean, did you watch the fight, McCorkle? What did you think of, the, of, the, of that fight? Uh, well, Greg talked me into betting on Evander Holyfield since it was like five to one. I thought, <laughs> heck, maybe he'll out boxing. I was like, who knows? I thought Belfort would win in a minute, but I was like, you know, Greg was so confident. I was like, maybe he will win. And, uh, you know, when he fell through the ropes after missing a punch, like he actually fell through on his own. I was like, this isn't going to turn out well. And they stopped it too soon, but it wouldn't have mattered. It was the next exchange he was going down. So it's, uh, he barely, I mean, dude, that was, that looked like an old man fighting uh, a slightly low. less old man on a bunch of steroids is what it looked like. You bet but, on Holyfield? Um, you bet on Holyfield? I swear, Greg kept saying, You convinced me to bet. You convinced me to bet on me, Jordan. Yeah, like uh, Greg kept saying, I kept thinking, dude, I'm always wrong. My instinct was Vitor Belfort, first round knockout. I thought he was going to maul him. And I thought, but Greg was saying, I mean, you got to consider, look at the shape he's in. He's been, he's been doing this for 50 years. And I was like, that's a good point, man. Like Tyson looked, people say, whatever they want, Tyson looked amazing in his last fight. Man. Like yeah. he looked. Wait, Tyson would beat a lot of heavyweights now, I think, if he still got his chin, you know. He looked amazing, so I thought, well, Holyfield looks in just as good a shape. Greg always, whenever he says something, I said the opposite. He's right, because I lose my money. So I was like, I'm going with, going with Greg's pick. And then I, yeah, when he fell through the ropes after not getting touched, I thought, that's not, like, it's not I can't believe that. I mean, I'm just like, I mean, I was just watching it. I'm like, you know, the first few seconds, he looked pretty spry. He was yeah, bouncing yeah. around real nice. He threw a couple, couple of things. I was like, okay, okay. And then, and like, it was like he got touched by Vitor, who, who did obviously fucking jacked. But I mean, he got touched and just was like, oh, like, I, I, I you know, that kind of collapses. It was yeah, unexpected. I, in, in Greg's defense, too, part of it was uh, I saw a pre fight before I bet with Holyfield. He said he'd been getting ready to fight Tyson for two years, training every day for two years. And I thought, well, if his body's healthy, as good as he is, he was not going to be as fast, or his reflexes aren't going to be as good. But, you know, I thought, uh, you know, you look at Mayweather, who's 44, 45. Mayweather still has, you know, um, not his speed, but, I mean, he's still got all the boxing skill in the world where you can't hit him. I thought I could see Holyfield maybe just dodging every punch for a few rounds. But, yeah, I got uh, killed on that. They had him on. They had him. Someone was holding the, the, the pads for him, and he looked terrible on the mids. And then I think, yeah. like, oh, he's doing that on purpose to kind of throw the other guy off. I'm like, when has a guy ever done that? <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, that's that usually not how you warm too. up by looking bad. <laughs> um, my excuse always was do I look like I'm out of shape because that's just a ploy like, yeah. I don't know um, and then Tito Ortiz also I don't know what happened because he looked good against Chuck Liddell when he fought a couple years ago and he looked pretty good in his last couple fights but in boxing it looked like he was like 
pulling his punches almost like he was throwing fake punches. Like he was like he agreed to go 20 percent. And then he got face planted, which everyone in the world was posting that meme. I never do that. I mean, like, I'm not saying that I'm like the king of morals, but when a guy's laid out on the ground, that's not my, that's not the kind of meme that I want to post. I just, I don't, I don't, I don't do it. It's, it's not my thing. Dude, uh, I thought I was watching the matrix. He was in such slow motion. I thought bullets were going to be whizzing by. <laughs> like, he, he really did. He looked like he was in slow motion. I was like, what is he doing? Like, it looks, it looked like the slowest thing I've ever seen. And of course, Anderson Silva's going to hit you back when you, yeah. When your punches are coming at Anderson Silva at four miles an hour, he's going to be able to dodge them. So. Uh, Don, did you watch Dude, You guys fight? were so funny, too, by the way. I, I'm at a concert, and I'm just getting all these texts. My phone just buzzing. I'm looking at it like, <laughs> I'm like, God, he looks like shit. What the fuck is happening? Who would pay for this shit? Like, and I'm like, well, I'm glad I didn't see that. It looks like I missed nothing. So. Don, did you watch the Tito Ortiz fight? Oh, I didn't see any of them, partner. So, so he came out and he was throwing punches like it, it was like almost like you're punching like a, like a your little brother or like you're playing with someone you know like you're just like like you're exaggerating punching someone it was like it was like bad 80s wrestling punches not even like yeah. 80s wrestling punches it was but it was crazy I, i've never seen i mean remember when dana white was gonna fight tito ortiz in boxing uh, yeah. And Dana like weighed in. I almost think Dana might have won uh, based on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what, Jake Paul. If Jake Paul. If Jake Paul's smart, he'll fight Tito Ortiz next because he will whip his ass. Well, Tito, uh, like you said, Tito called out Logan Paul. He goes, Logan, yeah. both of us just lost our last fight. We should fight each other. I mean, I don't know. Is he th that desperate for money, Tito Ortiz? It seems like he's, he saved his money. I know he didn't lose money to Jenna Jameson. She was probably worth eight times what he was worth. You know, I don't think he lost money in that divorce unless it was on lawyer fees or something. I, I don't even know if they were even married. Well, he honest. didn't get to save any money being mayor for one day. Being <laughs> <laughs> mayor for a day. He's the only politician that came out of politics poorer than when he went in. So he took out a loan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he didn't make any loan. deals. He, he, actually, he actually, I think he took out a loan during COVID while he was the governor or the mayor or whatever. Like, he actually... Um, but, but yeah, uh, I don't know. I mean, Logan Paul is just going to kill him. And I think that's going to be terrible for MMA again. Uh, I mean, do you, what do you, do you think, what, so what happened to his hands? Cause he, he had decent hand speed, right? Yeah. I mean, he, he looked like he was physically in shape, but he, I, I, I don't, man, I've never seen a decline in a fighter like that in my life. It looked like you said, it looked like it was a joke, like pro wrestling, like it. And I don't think, I think he was trying to swing. He just. God, maybe he got two torn rotator cuffs and a broken back or something. Like, I don't know, because he could not move. I mean, it was terrible. It was uh, unbelievable. It was unbelievable. I mean, Don, it, it, it made your, like, Takayama fight look like, uh, you know, Barrera versus Morales. Like, like I'm just, like, throw, the craziest. I mean, I've never seen slower motion punches. I mean, and, I mean, Don had a great – Don, on his worst day on his back, wouldn't throw, as, like, that slow. Like, Don yeah. – fucking – it was crazy. It was crazy. Um, so, uh, anyway, um, in uh, bare knuckle boxing, by the way, uh, Mike Richmond, you know Mike, Mike the Marine Richmond? Uh, a really good guy. He was a Bellator uh, fighter. He got tested positive a long time ago. He, he works at a strip club in Minnesota. He's like a manager. Anyway, he's doing he did bare knuckle boxing against Dakota Cochran. Dakota Cochran, who has wins over Chris Lieben and Johnny Hendricks, um, and he fucked up Dakota Cochran in bare knuckle boxing. And Dakota was the man, so good for Mike Richmond. Uh, that, that I'm glad there was an up in that sentence. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not going to make that joke. Uh, obviously, Dakota uh, uh, has a past of uh, some gay porn uh, he did before he got married, and it was a college thing. He needed some money here. Oh, it was that guy. All right. Yeah, yeah, We've yeah, all yeah. been there. <laughs> you know, yeah, listen, you know what the thing is, though? Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Yeah. I, I was young, I was poor, I, I was broke, it, yeah. but nobody wanted to pay me for sex. And that's the thing. If I'd been good looking enough, if I'd been in enough shape, see, I can't say to myself, well, I was broke like that. I would never, I don't know, because nobody wanted to pay me to do it. I've never been right. that good looking. I don't know what, Joe, Sean, you've been that right. good looking. Well, How many guys paid you for sex? I, I would get weird offers all the time. People would offer me their wives all the time, too. I was going to say, Greg was young. He was poor, uh, like all that he said, uh, and he uh, he just did it for free still. So it was weird. 
the game for free. Yeah, no one paid. No one had to pay me. Right. Yeah, um, so, but, but yeah, but actually, Dakota came on the show. I, I did a lot of gay porn jokes in the past, and he came on the podcast as a fan. He said, "Please don't make any gay porn jokes." Of course, I didn't. Uh, he happens to be a really good dude, and everyone, you know, you people go through their faces, and I'm, I'm not going to judge. Uh, we've I've evolved as a person uh, to, to to make fun of jokes. Uh, so him for that because whatever. Um, and it, but speaking of which, the the big issue right now is there's a uh, what are you what are you laughing about, Greg? Nothing that doesn't, you know, it was such a valiant attempt to be nice. And, uh, you know, people do things that before, and I said I wouldn't, I'm involved, I don't know, whatever, movie got. All right. So, so uh, a couple things. First of all, there's, uh, there's a, a transgender um, fighter who won o- over the weekend. Uh, you know the name of the, uh, I think her name is Alana. Uh, Alana, transgender. And if you look at a picture, ha- have you guys seen the picture of this person? Yeah. Hey, no. Greg, Greg, have you seen it? Hold on. Let me see. I'm not sure. I think I have seen this. Yes. Didn't you send us this? Did you text us this? No, 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 no. Uh, it's, it's, so this person was, uh, she was a special forces um, uh, for, uh, in the Marines. I mean, this, and the huge, jacked, just like, uh, I'm trying to think of her name. Her name is Alana McLaughlin. Um, and, uh, okay, so it was a dude that turned into a woman. Yes, yes, exactly. Okay, that's uh, what I'm saying now. Yes, yes. And they had a pic, and there was a picture of him before with an axe in his hand, and he's got these tattoos and he's jacked. And then there was yeah. after. So I, I made the joke of like, look, it's obviously a controversial topic, but at least we know what he did with the axe or what she did with the axe, right? Right. Which, which I thought was a funny joke. This is a basically just a dick joke. Uh, and I thought it was safe enough for people to laugh, and, and they did. Uh, a lot of people thought it was very funny, and a lot of transgenders went on my Instagram page, um, well, one at least, and said it was a, a woman uh, that became a man that goes, I'll borrow his penis, so uh, my friend Zach. Um, and then it became this like huge debate on my Instagram of whether or not it's fair enough for the person to fight in the women's division, um, because some people say, look, you know, uh, and a lot of females have a problem with it. A lot of females seem to have an issue with it. Female fighters. And I don't blame them because, you know, that's who I think we should talk to. They're the ones who would have to fight uh, because I, I think that I don't know the full science behind it, but let's just say they let transgenders compete in the uh, women's division. And now all of a sudden, like, the top 10 fighters are. <laughs> <laughs> the women's division are all people that were born men. Uh, that could be an issue, right? I think a lot of people might be like, what? The-? I think you, you don't want to say that. I think you're absolutely right. I think it absolutely can be an issue because <laughs> you're fighting someone who's still got the physical structure of a man, yeah. except now, you know, the sex organs or, or, or whatever. But But the body... It's still the, the, the structure. It's still a man's body at the end of the day. I, I would see where that would be. That would be a problem, you know? I mean, yeah. uh, so there's a reason we don't do a lot of intergender fights. Well, that's my solution is that I think there should be an MMA league of, or, or division of just trans, a trans division uh, where you have trans athletes. Boy, that'd be a deep pool of talent to pull from. <laughs> Well, you know, you're gonna, have to do some re- you're gonna have to do some recruiting and have like a 10 year plan. For, to you know what I want to know? Kid. Why can't I play in the WNBA? Like, if a guy can beat up a woman or a, yeah, you know, yeah, what's a guy? If a guy can trans and like transition, be up home, I can't play in the WNBA because I don't play basketball anymore, but I would dominate every woman on the planet in basketball. I, know, I gotta I tell you, I don't think that's entirely true. These women have really evolved. Some of them are very <laughs> incredibly talented, amazing basketball players that are just as big as you are, buddy. So I heard one of them actually dunked the other day, which blew my mind. Like, uh, that must okay. have been an exciting <laughs> game. You that wasn't even the other day. That was a while ago. But that was quite a bit now. All right, so Greg, yes, we see the picture. pictures. Yes. I mean, that's a big dude right there. That, that's a big I mean, dude. When it was, I mean, now it's a uh, now it's a very strong female. But oh my god, that 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 guy's like Jesus. That, that's a big guy right there. Um, before he he uh, he uh, transitioned. Um, but listen, there wasn't always a lot of female fighters either. You know, you have to start somewhere. 
You don't think that heard, it should be? I heard that's going to be Mayhem's defense. He's going to say that he <laughs> identifies as a woman. <laughs> so there's nothing wrong God. with it at that point. Oh, uh, that, that, it's still it's. <laughs> You know, it's still a crime. Still a crime. How much that guy weighs? Uh, I think. I think. I, I don't know what division. I think one forty-five now or one fifty-five. I don't know. Oh, that'd be a good matchup for Amanda Nunes, right? Yeah. Uh, no, no. I mean, she barely won her fight. I heard she was basically losing until she got wobbled a couple times. She trains at Colby Covington's gym, by the way, which has got to be oh. like. I just want to see that those trainings. <laughs> Um, but yeah, and then so Sean Strickland got gotten got in big trouble. Because, well, not big trouble. So Sean Strickland basically said, uh, "This is his his opinion." And look, and look, look like I said, we at MMA roasted. We respect everybody. I'm, I'm not making fun of anybody. You could we're gonna. I, I personally am gonna call you whatever you want to be called. I just think when it comes to competing against the opposite, uh, a, a different gender, the gender you weren't born with. There's some advantages that, and uh, I'm not, I'm not into it. I, th I think that you should, uh, you know, I, I, I think there should be a trans division. I think that would just be, you know, I think that would be. So Sean Strickland says, "You're still a fucking man." Uh, he says this person's. A, uh, <laughs> so he goes, uh, Sean Strickland says, he goes, I consider myself a classical feminist. Uh, if your religion or government has an unequal standard for women, and I'm not with it. Testicles at birth equal man, ovaries at birth equal woman. Uh, he goes, change your name, call yourself a woman, but you're still a fucking man. Got a women's MMA coward. This is why the athletic commission is useless. Uh, so uh, but it, it, it is a man until he whacks off his wanker, you know. Then he's a man without a dick. Right. Uh, I don't like I, Sean. So, right. Then he's, so, then he's me. <laughs> He's <stunned. laughs> uh, I, I, I'm sorry that that's that, that was your opening for uh, another uh, Brendan Shaw joke, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, thanks, thanks for putting it on me instead of Shaw. <laughs> What's up, guys? Take a break for one second because I got to tell our fans some great news. We are back and better than ever. All eyes are on the gridiron as teams are back on to start another football season. As always, Bet Online is your number one spot for all the pro and college football action this season. With a new updated site and interface, even more odds, props, and contests, Bet Online continues to be the number one source for everything football. Head to the website or use the mobile device to sign up today to receive your 100% welcome bonus. That's double your initial deposit just for signing up. Don't forget to use promo code NFL100. From football, basketball, boxing, right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait. Take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online. The fastest and easiest way to bet all your favorite sports. Bet online. Your online sports book experts. Okay, guys. Come on back. <laughs> so, in, in, in other news, uh, Conor McGregor went to the Video Music Awards and got into a fight with Machine Gun Kelly. Uh, did you see this, Greg? I did. I was like, what is going on here? What is, is this the only way that, that, that McGregor can make sure he makes the press? Is by just fighting somebody? Like, So I, I guess they said he wanted a picture with him, and Machine Gun Kelly said no and kind of pushed him out of the way. McGregor stumbled back, spilled his drinks, and then tried to punch him and then threw a drink at him. Uh, I don't know if that's exactly what happened. Uh, that, that's, that, that was Machine Gun Kelly's version. Sounds like a pretty cool version of Machine Gun Kelly. But what, what, what happened? I didn't hear what you said. Man. So there's a, there's a, a rapper who turned into, a, now he's like a emo music star. He's pretty good. Uh, he was, I liked him better as a rapper, to be honest. But he, he, he like won all, he's, like, he's met, dating Megan Fox. He's sort of yeah. like a big star right now. He went to the, the Video Music Awards. And on the red carpet, McGregor got into a, like a, like kind of, lunged at him and like attacked at him but he had like a cane with him and it took a punch but it was like 10 people in the middle and it just it just got really awkward and stupid and but of course it was all over tmz all over everything it doesn't make mcgregor look cool because he be, but there's actually odds now on it someone took the odds on the fight and he's uh he's oh uh, my god <laughs> well you know when i saw it i was just like i was like i wonder if they agreed because to me it kind of felt like a 
publicity stunt. Like, like, hey, I got to... Oh, really? Yeah, you right, think thank so? Thank you, Don Ryan. <laughs> like, you're just gonna, you know, like, he's like, hey, I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to attack you. And then it's going to be all over the global news tomorrow. I mean, it just, it just seems like such a deliberate media. St- Cause oh. that's what, cause really the, that's all Connor is now is a media stunt artist. Media um, <laughs> now, Hector Lombard, have you ever gotten to a fight with a uh, celebrity? I fight all the celebrity all the time. Anywhere they want to find me, they come to find me and I go to find them. I don't care. I don't care because you tried to fuck my side cheek. Don't fuck <laughs> my side cheek. My side cheek. Not for you, Mr. Famous Kelly Sheen Gun. I shoot the Sheen Kelly guy, you. <laughs> the machine my gun poor gun. neighbors. I, I forgot to close my window. My poor neighbors are hearing it right now. <laughs> oh, my God. Wait, so MGK had to fuck your side chick? Don't you tell me to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> wow. 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 <laughs> All right. So, um, what else is going on? You know, on? Adam, when, um, what, yeah. when I saw the thing with Conor McGregor, I swear to God, my first thought was, why are they hosting MTV Music Awards at Auschwitz, and why is Conor McGregor trying to fight a POW? <laughs> like, Machine Gun Kelly, dude, they need to, if they're going to fight, they need to, they need to fight at a meth weight. Like, forget a catch weight. Let's do a meth <laughs> weight, because he looked like Aaron Carter if he was anorexic. Like, there's some I'm wrong yeah. with that dude, man. He is cracked out. Like it really. Hey, what hopefully about, he'll man? fight like Aaron Carter, and that would be a good matchup. I used to like Machine Gun Kelly back in the day. He was a rapper. I went and saw him in concert twice, actually. He put on a great show, and then he got that beef with Eminem, and I'm like, everyone's like, he's done, he's done, he's he's over, he's over with. He was like opening up for Limp Bizkit a couple years ago. The guy completely like reinvented himself, learned how to play the guitar, and now is like bigger than fucking like Fall Out Boy, like this huge band. He's like huge right now. So yeah, I got to give the guy credit because his rap career was almost was, was over, it seemed like. And he's just like, fuck you. Like, you know, props to him because it's hard to do. It's a, so. it's a shame he's only got a few months left. <laughs> <laughs> that dude is near death, I'm telling you. Uh, now, Greg, over the weekend, you saw Jane's Addiction? I did, man. I was, it was such a weird night, too, because Jane's Addiction, never seen him live before. And, but that album ritual day habitual was by me that was my 20 somethings in the 90s like i listened to that that was the jam i fucking loved it so i couldn't wait to see them and the weirdest thing happened like i i recently shot a new half hour for this youtube channel called comedy cube and it was supposed to drop next sunday and then i get tagged in some message i look at it and they're like hey it's funny fridays we're dropping this new half hour by greg romero wilson i was like Oh, you fucks! I'm yeah. not ready. I'm not prepared for this. So I, I but I mean, I, uh, um, I was very excited to see that it came out, and I went and looked at it. It's fantastic, and I was just like, so I was like, I was like, oh my god, my special's out. I'm at this concert. I don't know who to tell. This is so weird, you know. But it was, it was pretty. It was exciting. It was very exciting that way. Jane's addiction still fucking rocks. Although it's funny because even Perry Frick. You know, it seems like every rock star, everybody, whether you're Republican, Democrat, whatever, feels the need to, like, give some kind of political speech in the middle oh, of the God. show. Yeah. I know. And I've seen, I saw Kid Rock do it, and I was like, oh, God. And now I saw Perry Farrell do it. <laughs> he was like, there's tar balls in the ocean. We got to protect the ocean, and we're not going to fuck it. And he gives his whole speech about the ocean, and I'm just like, Hey, can anyone just do the fucking act? Yeah, but he's always been like that. I feel like he's always kind of been that guy. No, I know. It's just it's just now everybody has to stop and do a, a ten minute speech in the middle of the show. Was, uh, was Dave Navarro with him? Yes, he was, and he was fucking fantastic. Funny Dave Navarro story. So Dave Navarro, uh, I heard him on Stern a long time ago saying that like back in the day he was on a lot of drugs and he was yeah with Dane's addiction. And someone threw a, a vibrator on stage while he's up there. So he catches it, he picks it up, and he's like, well, uh, I want to be, like, really rebellious. So he stuck it up his ass, like, during the concert. Like, he, like, just, like, showed his ass to the crowd and put the vibrator <laughs> up his ass, thinking that, like, everyone would be, like, and the whole crowd just was, like, ew. Ew. Like, 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 <laughs> The 90s were a wild time, man. Like, he said, like, well, yeah. I heard he was in college, and it was just for, he was doing that concert. He needed the money. College, so it doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> but he said everybody was like, 
like the concert stopped. Was like, it was like the fuck, dude. Like <laughs> you weren't supposed to do that. <laughs> that that made, that made me laugh. There's no bigger doing, sign of rebellion. Can you imagine you're doing a stand-up show and somebody throws a fucking dildo. You're like, yeah, right. <laughs> and it was like, uh. <laughs> still in shops material again. Oh, hell, that's three. Whammy. <laughs> so uh, there's a good Hey, did you guys hear? Uh, not to keep talking about Shaba, even though that's exactly what I want to do. Um, he was mad at the Triller show the other night because he said uh, the whole Donald Trump stuff, they tried to steal his idea for a fight companion. Like he literally said, yeah, they steal my idea of doing a fight companion with Trump. Like as if he's the one that came up with the fight companion, not Joe Rogan 12 years ago. Like so, yeah. I mean, like, I mean, you know, <laughs> yeah, I just said, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, okay, uh, what are you gonna? Uh, <laughs> what are you gonna we'll do? just paint over that one. Uh, so, uh, on the horizon, by the way. Oh, I got that funny story. So, I did a show the other day, and uh, first of all, Victor Ortiz showed up at my house on my birthday. Did I, did I tell you that, Greg? Remember that? You, you, you were there, right? At my birthday party, uh, with Vic when. Well, Victor Ortiz? You know, Victor Ortiz, the fighter, the one oh. that's like Yeah, yeah, yeah. So well, we became I, so we like became friends after that, right? And he's like he's a real nice guy. I mean, just a, he's the kind of guy that yeah. like those guys that you meet and he tells you his whole life story like within five minutes and you're like, I fucking love this guy. Crazy life story, right? He's a so, good guy. He's a really good guy. Really good guy. So I did a show at the Roosevelt last week and he came by backstage, Adam, what's up? Blah blah blah. And then uh, it was me, him and Pippin hanging out. And I was asking Victor, I'm like, hey, what was it like being in the Expendables with like Stallone? Like, what was that like? You know, like, cause he was like, the, like a big part in the movie. Like, I'm like, how'd you get that part? So he says that like, somehow Stallone saw him on like one of his fights and he calls him up and he's like, yo, Victor Ortiz, uh, it's me, uh, Sylvester Stallone. And he goes, yeah, right, Stallone, fuck you. Don't fucking prank me and hung up on him, right? And then, <laughs> and then he calls back and he's like, yo, it's me, fly. He goes, Sly, what do you think, you all fucking Sly? Like, he doesn't know that's his nickname. What, you fucking, you can't Sly? Like, he goes, I'll fuck you up. Then he gets up on him again. He calls him back. He's like, yo, Victor, it's me, Stallone, I want to talk to you. He goes, meet me at this fucking gas station in 10 minutes. I will kick the living shit out of you, right? So finally, right, finally he calls him up and he, and he gets through and he's like, yo, Victor, it's me, Stallone. I know your agent. And he's naming all these people, at like Gersh or whatever. And he's like, Oh shit! Like this, he goes, Rocky, <laughs> he goes, <laughs> <laughs> and then and then Stallone goes, yeah, that, that's a character. I'm not really Rocky. <laughs> like I, he goes, I want you to to audition for this movie. He goes, what's an audition, right? So he goes, uh, he goes, well, you know, you try out. I'll give you some, you know, lines. So he said he goes down there and they give him lines and he get, he sees it and he goes, listen, man. I'm not an actor. I, I, I don't know what the hell, but I, don't, I, I never acted before. You're an actor. But he goes, I, I came from a broken home. I did this, I did that. I, I came from, he goes, you inspired me, Rocky West. He goes, and if you give me this part, I'm a fucking workhorse. And Stallone goes, you're the real life Rocky Balboa and gave him the part. <laughs> <laughs> like, <was> wow. <laughs> Sounds to me, Adam, like you need to give uh What's his name? You need to give Greg's uh, Greg his number and have him call him as um, Hector. See what happens. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, v Victor, Hector Lombard's on the phone for you. Let's see what happens. <laughs> like, like, can you, I mean, can you believe that? He hung up on him three times thinking he was being prank called, and then he goes, Rocky. <laughs> like, let's be honest, though. If somebody called you out of the blue saying they were Sylvester Stallone, you'd think you're being pranked, too. You would absolutely be like, I, okay, I, I don't know what radio, I don't know what podcast this is. Fuck you. And then he goes down there and he goes, I'm not fucking <laughs> give me the part. And then he goes, he goes, he said he was like on set and they, they gave him like a machine gun to shoot. And he was like putting in the bullets one by one. Like he didn't know how to shoot them. They had to come and like give him all kinds of training and shit. And yada, yada. But uh, man, the guy is a, a nice guy. He's only like 34 years old. What, what were you saying? Stallone gave him a machine gun. He was like, Rambo? <laughs> <laughs> Have I ever told you guys the story of the one time I met Sylvester Stallone? No. <laughs> okay, so it was for the first Expendables movie. There's a scene in it where they use the stunt guy to be like the girl's like boyfriend or husband or whatever. But I guess he had one line. He was like, hey, babe, you okay? That was the line. And I guess they didn't like the guy's voice. They thought it was a little high. 
So they brought in a couple of guys to be voiceover, you know, to audition to do this one line to see who sounded more, you know, more like a guy that might kick some ass. So they go in there. So I, so I'm one of five guys reading for this one line. And they're like, listen, Stallone's coming. Just don't, you know, be, he'll be nice. Just don't, don't ask him anything. Don't, don't ask for anything. No, you know, just, just whatever he says, do. just, you know, just, and we'll bring you in one at a time and read it. Sloan comes in and he's like, hey, hey, no, hey, you know, like, good to meet you, Sly. It's a pleasure. You know, you're a hero, whatever. And he's like, hey, there you go. I'll be right back. I'll be right back. So he leaves. <laughs> he leaves. Okay. And they're like, all right. So listen, just as soon as he comes back, we'll start. You know, you'll read first, you'll read second, you'll read third. And I'm like fourth, fourth or fifth in this line. And Stallone still isn't, he still hasn't come back. And I'm like, I'm like, you know what? I got time to take a piss. I can go take a piss and come back before they finish reading even one guy. It'll be fine. So I go in the bathroom and I'm starting to take a leak in from the stall next to me. I hear, Ew. <laughs> like, <laughs> like <laughs> and I look down and there's Stallone's shoe. Oh, and no. he's in, he's in there trying to pinch a loaf, oh, God. and he's making all these noises, and I'm trying not to die laughing, and I just want to get out of there before he comes out. I yeah. want to finish and get out of there so he doesn't know who it was. So I just <laughs> like, and I just like, I just, I just, I just uh, <laughs> and I just finished missing, got the fuck out of there, and wow. so uh, yeah, so I met Stallone. I I, I heard Stallone shit. <laughs> Jeremy Piven has a funny story he told me on the road, which he says it about his act. First time he met Stallone on an airplane. And the first thing he says to Piven, he goes, hey, nice to meet you. My name's Jeremy. You know, he goes, he goes, I do not use a penis pump. And he goes, uh, <laughs> excuse me? He goes, yeah, the, the Des Moines Register computer, they say I use a penis pump in the paper, but I don't use a penis pump. Like, he's like, what? I think I walked into the wrong, and then we wrote like, oh. uh, <laughs> just in case you were wondering what he was thinking about. <laughs> Do I raise this? Uh, use a penis pump. I want to hear like, if Hector Lombard used a penis pump. I don't use a penis pump. I don't hear it. I use a little sheep. A little sheep of pump, pump, pump. It was like, what kind of article talks about Stallone using a penis pump? Like, no kidding. What kind of legitimate news? <laughs> it's like, it's going like, like, it to the Des Moines Register or Hustler. I can't remember. I read them both. It was, a, it, was, it was a thin news week in the entertainment section of the Des Moines. <laughs> how would they even know that? I mean, like, that's so funny. Did he stop in Des Moines and they're like, look what he left in his room? Maybe he bought the shop. Can't keep a secret. <laughs> <laughs> in from in from the the outlands. <laughs> I do not use a penis pump. I got to help. Got to help McCorkle out. He's really. Oh my! I, I was I was, <laughs> I, I was laughing so hard. Yeah, you hear a lot of these actor stories that are like hilarious. I I heard like a story about De Niro uh, when um. What's his name? Who's that guy who used to be on uh, the guy who always put on sunglasses on all, uh, you know, talking about on the CSI, he left, not. Oh, you know, the redheaded dude. David Caruso. David Caruso, there you go. I'm so bad. Story that he did a movie with like De Niro and he was like stealing all the scenes and De Niro just like took him by the side and like rimmed, like, reamed him the fuck out. Like, hey, I'm the fucking big actor here. Don't you dare like fucking hold it. I mean, not as funny as the pump story, but anyway, so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I liked it better when you said he, he rimmed him. <laughs> All right, this week, Anthony Smith, Ryan Spann. I think it's going to be a good fight. I do. Uh, Anthony Smith is a guy that we had on the podcast back when he was fighting, I think, for like BF, BFC or something. He was like not even in the UFC. And I'll tell you, man, the guy like is a really solid guy. And uh, I remember him texting me like, Adam, thanks for giving a shit about my fights, which was I thought was really cool. I remember he, remember he got mad at Diego Sanchez. You there when like Diego took his like, nickname? Uh, of like Lionheart, and then he was the Lionheart, and he was like, he wanted to fight Diego Sanchez. <laughs> it would like, be Lionheart versus Lionheart. <laughs> <laughs> so then I kept like calling Diego Lionheart just to piss him off. <laughs> he was like, I heard in the interview. <laughs> but uh, Ryan Spann is a good dude, also. He used to come to my Zoom comedy shows. I invited him, he used to just show up and watch him. Uh, good dude. Um, it's gonna be a good fight. Uh, who do we like in this fight? Uh, McCorkle. 
Uh, let me see who Greg picks first, and I'll pick the opposite. No, um, I think Anthony Smith, man. I, I don't know. I just feel like Anthony Smith has something left, but probably not if I put money on it. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm going Ryan Spann on this one. Anthony, I know, I know he's coming off a win, but, I mean, he's been a little up and down. There's been some inconsistency there. I mean, same with Ryan Spann, really, but I don't know. I think Ryan Spann's definitely more on the upswing. I like him right now. By the way, Sean, back in the day, I remember me and you first started becoming friends. You told me if I go to – I was single. You go, if I go to Indiana, you hook me up with some hot girls. You said you knew every hot chick in Indiana, and you banged most of them. Oh, oh. Uh, is this true? Uh, well, there's only two, so it's not hard to, it's not hard to find <laughs> two good-looking girls. It, uh, I always told everybody, man, like Indiana, you would swear if you came here that they were filming The Hills Have Eyes 3, like everywhere you go. Like it is uh, – I don't know if it's the inbreeding. I don't know if it's the weather. I don't know what it is, but this is an, the only uglier state I've ever been in my life. And I've been all over the world. Yeah. The only uglier place I've ever been in is Milwaukee. Everybody in Milwaukee looks like Mike Krzyzewski for some reason. Like they all look like <laughs> – I don't know if it's the Polish thing. I don't know what's going on with Polish people up there, but uh, it, uh, yeah, no, it is. This is. I'm not kidding, man. It really looks like. It looks like. Yeah, but I've seen you with some girls that were. Great. Everybody is jacked looking. I don't but know. Got, but first of all, well, I mean, your your girlfriend now is gorgeous, but I've also seen you like back in the day, send me pictures of some of the girls you were sleeping with. Like the one girl you brought to my show that was like half black, I think, or Brazilian, and she was a smoke show. The one that like loved you and wanted to marry you, but you you like didn't like her. Uh, it doesn't really narrow it down. I, I was going to say, that sounds like all of them. Uh, yeah. Remember when Sean sent us some of his, like, screenshots, Greg, of some of the things he told girls? Oh, yeah. That was some of the craziest. His, his, back when he was on the, the, the dating apps? Yeah, the Twitter <laughs> or whatever. Yeah, yeah that was my only goal. My goal, seriously, back then was to make them mad enough to not respond. Because I was writing a book that I was going to act as if, like, like, basically how to ruin a relationship before it starts. And I was, I saw, I was literally trying to get people to not text me back by offending them. It was, uh, it was funny. By the way, if you go to the UFC site right now, uh, the third match on the main card is Nicholas Mata versus Nicholas Mata. Wow, that guy, that guy, the devil. Never heard of either of them. They, they, it's his debut against his debut. It was actually fighting Cameron Van Camp. Uh, so Nicholas Mata against. Yeah, a lot of these people I have not heard of. The Joaquin Buckley I've heard of. That guy's awesome. Panny, Panny's fighting Raquel Pennington. I like that. Panny's a underrated hottie um, who's a nice girl from Sweden. Swedish girls are different, man. They're just different. I, I find there was I remember I took home this girl one time. She was a stripper from I think Denmark, and we had sex like the first night, and then I had invited her out again, and then she's like, "What?" She's like, "Okay, now you got to earn it." I'm like, "Well, we had sex last night." She's like, "Well, yeah, I wanted to make sure you were good in bed." No point of going out with you if you weren't gonna, if you, if like you were going to suck. But now I'm not going to sleep with you for like four or five days. And I was like, well, that, that's, a, that's a different approach. What a strategy. That's very European. I like it. I like those zero rules. What was the worst girl you ever had in bed, Greg? Ah, uh, geez. I'm going to say one through four and six through the rest. <laughs> what do you mean? We're probably an equal tie for the worst. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, that's a heck of a span. That's, <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. You know, I'm trying to think. Of, I mean, if there's – oh, okay, yes. Here's the the one – you know, we were, we were young. We were in college. And so for her, you know, <laughs> she was just trying to – She was just trying – it seemed like she was just trying to, like, imitate sex. So, like, she would be on top. She would be like, ah, 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 ah. Okay. Um, and then she would just get off and like, okay, let's do this. Uh, 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 okay. And then, uh, and like, it was just it was weird. Like we were doing scenes or something. It was very bizarre. It was, not, there was nothing organic about it. It was like, we were, we were imitating sex scenes. We'd seen them. It was horrible. That was the weird, that was probably the worst one. What about you, Sean? Uh, that's when I was in college and I was desperate for money. I hear it is. And, uh, <laughs> this guy <laughs> hit me up and. It's only a way I could make a quick fifty dollars. So I mean, I had no choice. Be, fifty uh, bucks. I got fifty bucks for you right now, cowboy. Uh, that's what. That's what happens when you're in college. You know, you don't have a choice to, when you need money. You need you money. Yes, and limited employment options. Don, what about you? What was the worst girl you ever had in bed? I'll answer for him. You're wise. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 Greg Fry. What was the worst you ever had? It's good. Uh, Brian is turtle. Uh, you know, 
they, you know, they can move fast when they want. They tell you they can't, but boy, they're surprised. <laughs> oh, they, they want to get out of there. They'll put up a squad. That was a true story. You, you fucked a turtle? Sure, yeah, it was a tortoise. I think mean, it tortoise, probably. And the bigger one, bigger one. Uh, Don, what about you? Partner, I'll tell you what. I only about 98% of them were bad. Only about <laughs> five of them were any good. Why? What did they do that was so bad? Uh, showed up. <laughs> <laughs> that was their first mistake. Yeah, that was horrible. When they take out their clothes and, and they you know they hang their bra on the door and it touches the ground, you know. From the, Dude, I, had, the I, had I just uh, I just did the math and Don has slept with uh, over four hundred women. Ninety eight percent were bad and five were good. You are yeah. impressive. Of course, right, you're right. the only one there. You do math. You know. <laughs> <laughs> the other two do math. Math, 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 of course. Uh, I had a girl one time. I thought it was going to be great. It was a stripper from Vegas. She was on Rock of Love. Well, this will going to be wild. Uh, back that like that old Brett Michael show. And then I waited. At 4 in the morning, I took her home. And she just laid there and was like, uh, slower, slower. Ah, like, just, just like complaining the entire time. Like complaining the entire time. And so she was her, Jewish. And I like told my friend, she was like terrible in bed. I'm like, dude, I thought she was going to be wild. She was like, had cats and fucking fake titties. And, and my friend told his girlfriend who knew her. So I go back to the strip club and I uh, say hi to her. She's like, fuck you. You told people I was bad in bed. Like, I was like, oh God, I had to like backtrack there. I got mad at my friend Gary. Gary Alexander uh, was the one that fucked that up for me. Uh, you know, the crazy daughter. part of the crazy daughter, part of that what was that? The crazy part of that story is she became Tito Ortiz's off. boxing coach, and she was like, slower, slower. Like, <laughs> <laughs> hey, Don, Don, what were you saying, Don? I said you should have told her to prove you wrong. Yeah, I know. I should have told her that. That was like, <laughs> I mean, sometimes it was like, I've had other ones that I thought were going to be bad. Maybe they were like, kind of had like boring jobs or like, like, you know, nerdy, and they were fucking psycho. Like, they were like amazing. You know, you were like, you know, they were like spinners and shit. But. No, that's the way it always goes. The girls you think are going to be wild and incredible wind up being a snore. And then the girls you think are like the sweet girls that are going to want end up being wild and incredible. It always seems to kind of be the opposite. I had one girl, though, I took home from a comedy show at uh, the Ice House. And she was like, she goes, you could punch me in the face. And I was like, uh, no. <laughs> I was like, hmm. no. She's like, I, she, I, don't, she goes, I don't mind. I was like, yeah, that's not really my, you know, I'll give you a noogie. Like, I, I'm not, I'm not going to punch you in the face. Like, like I, I mean, that's well, if only you would have introduced her to Mayhem, all this could have been avoided. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the freedom of being Sean McCarkle, I tell you. I'll never know. Yeah. All right. So meanwhile, yesterday. Hey, uh, by the way, didn't you, Adam? Yeah. Weren't you the one that used to tell the story about a girl having a a, a rape fantasy and yeah. wanting you to like go out and sneak in? And you're like, eh, I'd rather not go to jail. Yeah, I go. I was staying out of prison fantasy. Just, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy, crazy. I think it's too much porn. I think porn desensitized everybody. It's too much. I think you're right about that. You know, it used to be hard to get. Yeah. Remember yeah, the easy to get like, in when you're in college, but hard to it get. Was, <laughs> it used to be like a caper. You had to sneak, wear a fucking dark sunglasses, a trench coat, so, you know, just sneak into the porn store. Yeah, it's great. Not make eye contact with anybody is the whole thing. Now you just click, click, there it is. Oh, all you want. Blah, 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 blah. Everything Greg just described sounds like me trying to get someone to crop my dog's ears. Like every vet I called are like, uh, <laughs> we don't typically do that, but... I'm like, dude, am I like, I'm doing something illegal here? Because they're kind of like, well, who's asking? How old is the dog? Do you, how'd you hear about us? Like, they're like, dude, am I doing a drug deal here? Like, what is going on? Why do you want to crop so, his ears? Um, basically for looks. He's very vain. So. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should crop your tail. So they're like, trying to fight, you know? Let his ears, <laughs> don't crop his ears. It probably hurts a lot. I was going to say, is that, is, think, that a th is, that, is that a thing? Is that is that a considered mutilation? Or what's the, why would it be? Uh, I don't know anything about it. Have you ever seen a pit bull with non-cropped ears? Yes. I would yeah, assume you've so, one, yes. You've seen one with cropped ears, you'll know yeah. why. Like no, don't crop his ears. Let him, let him, let him be fine. He's fine. He's a beautiful dog. 
I mean, you pay ten thousand dollars for a dog, he'll wear and do what you tell him. Oh boy! I mean, you think it's a breed anyway? You know, you have some real highlights, and then you got some, you have some lowlights. Every show, every show. So, I, mean, you know, I love I started, you, buddy. Started coaching yesterday. Yesterday was first day of wrestling, right? So I got like twelve new kids. So you did accept the job yeah, back, the yeah. hour commute, and the whole thing. The whole thing, and they have to wear masks while wrestling, and I have to wear. Oh, that's gotta that's be insane. hard. Oh, man. That's insane. That's insane. And I gotta wear a mask yeah, while coaching, right? That's fucking stupid. As a matter of fact, you know. I, I mean, agree, hundred percent. I, I want to see. I want to see the asshole who made that rule go and do that. You know that? Yeah, he that's should, that's that be, seems real hard. It's yeah, terrible. he should be forced to do that himself for two and a half hours, wear a mask, and try and work out. It's horrible, right? But the kids are pretty funny. Like the first day, the kids don't know anything. So I go, all right, guys, warm up. Start, you know, running circles. A kid has his backpack on him with all his books. And I was like, uh, you could take your backpack off, buddy. He's like, oh, okay. yeah, that, that's the kid whose dad signed him up for that class. <laughs> He's like, I don't want to take wrestling. He's like, you need to take some wrestling. Kid. It would like, have been amazing right. if Adam showed up for the first day of practice in a Cobra Commander outfit. It would have really thrown everybody off that walked by. It was, so it was pretty funny, though, because my wife's like, my wife always calls me Johnny Lawrence from, uh, from you know, his like <laughs> Cobra Kai, and, yeah, because uh, I was like, all right, guys, there's different ways to do sprawls. I'm like, I like to do a sprawl where you hit your chest. Some people like to hit, hit like their hips, and like sometimes with different coaches tell different things, right? So I'm like, it doesn't matter. Like everybody's whether everyone's saying is correct. It's just a matter of preference, right? I'm like, for example, how many of you guys have ever picked up a girl before? Who ever hit on a girl? And one kid raises his hand out of twelve. I'm like, all right, well, I guess you guys are kind of nerds. <laughs> 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 you guys gotta get on that, huh? You should get them all Hannibal Lecter masks. And now, you know, because that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get a Hannibal Lecter mask and wear that from now on. Well, I told him, I said, I guess the thing was like, like Adam, the, the masks fall off or you don't have to really enforce it. So, I, I, we have one guy telling me you have to wear masks, and another guy saying, don't worry about it. So, I'm like, listen, guys. You know, if you, I'm not going to encourage your mask. Don't, don't tell your parents that, you know. And, of course, I'm waiting for them to want to tell The coach said I don't have to wear a mask, but I'm like, you know. Oh, yeah. That, that's but, inevitable. But, you know. You always want to teach kids to teach. Teach kids what? Yeah, nothing good. Exactly. Nothing yeah, good ever starts with, look, don't tell your parents. Don't tell your parents. That is get, never. Get in the jacuzzi. Here's old candy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> all right well what do don't you tell your parents we're gonna wrestle around a little bit <laughs> yeah off. greg what do you have coming up first of all you guys please check out my new half hour it's on youtube uh i'm gonna post the link uh it, on twitter uh right after this show and it'll be addressed to uh mma roasted so all the mma roasted fans will hopefully see it please watch it, it did uh it did about nine thousand views in the first three days so that's not bad um and but i would love it if you guys all checked it out you know adam you're always telling me it's such a great comic if you guys have never seen it please check out my new half hour uh on youtube totally free everybody can watch it nobody and then this never week made me laugh harder than greg wilson so. Thank you, my man. I appreciate it. You guys are going to see something you've probably never seen before. <laughs> Listen, don't tell your parents, but you're going to see something you've never seen before. Uh, and then this weekend, I am the grand opening headliner at the brand new <laughs> Laughing Stock Comedy Company uh, in uh, Bakersfield. The new comedy club just opened up, and I'll be there this Friday and Saturday at 8. And then, uh, Don, what do you have coming up? Uh, well, let's see, in about 20 minutes, I have a dentist appointment, so that's always fun. You know, I, I lost a, uh, uh, a crown, so they got to put a new crown on me. And then uh, we're doing the, the podcast, uh, you know, the Dan and Don's Toxic Masculinity, which is doing great. You know, when I got on Joe Rogan uh, show a few months back, it just, it just, boom, man, it just, it just uh, started growing by about 500%. So uh, thanks, Joe Rogan. <laughs> yeah, thank you for uh, mentioning that here. Uh, and uh... <laughs> But, yes, but when I got on, on uh, Adam Hunter's podcast, I, I grew up uh, 1,000%. So thank you, Adam. 
Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Thank you, Don. We're, we're, we're blessed to have you. Uh, we really so, are. I love you, Don. You're a legend. So, Everybody so what do you have? And please don't tell me you're going to clip your dog's ears to speak. So what, what do you have? This? What do you have? Yeah, that's, uh, that's first. I got to be there tomorrow morning to get it started. So that's the uh, – and then I go back the next day to pick him up. I'm so committed. I'm driving four hours to drop him off, driving back home, and turn around the next day, driving back to pick him back up. Assuming he makes it through the surgery, maybe. Like, yeah, baby. All right. Well, I will be at the Minnesota House of Comedy uh, <laughs> this week. Minnesota House of Comedy. In October, I'm going to be in Lansing, Michigan. <laughs> uh, in mid-October. Go to adamhuntercomedy.com. Got my whole thing. Greg, I gave your name to the, the booker. Uh, he should be contacting you soon. Uh, oh, marvelous. Thank you very much, man. I appreciate that. So thank you guys so much, and have a great day, guys. Be good. Take care, guys. Thanks, buddy.